thinking 18 months, even with all the work that you've already done to this point and the planning that you are taking with lots of different potential uh, vaccinations and building up for that now? Yeah, so the, there's an approach called the RNA vaccine that people like Moderna, CureVac, uh, and others are using that in 2015, we'd identified that as very promising uh, for pandemics and for uh, other applications as well. And so if everything goes perfectly uh, with the RNA approach, we could actually beat the 18 months. We don't want to create unrealistic expectations. The efficacy of vaccines in older people is always a huge challenge. You know, it turns out the flu vaccine uh, isn't that effective in elderly people. Most of the benefit comes from younger people not uh, spreading it because they're vaccinated. And that, that benefits on a community basis, the elderly. Here, we clearly need a vaccine that works in the upper age range because they're uh, most at, at risk of that. And doing that so that you amp it up so it works in older people and yet you don't have side effects. You know, if we have you know, one in 10,000 uh, side effects, that's, you know, way more, 700,000, uh, you know, people who will suffer from that. So really understanding the safety at gigantic scale across all age ranges, you know, pregnant, male, female, undernourished, uh, existing comorbidities, it's very, very hard. And that actual decision of, okay, let's go and give this vaccine to the entire world uh, governments will have to be involved because there will be some risk and indemnification needed before that can uh, be decided on. Let me ask you sort of rapid fire, a bunch of questions that, that we get different answers from depending on every person we ask, but I think you have better sources. <laughs> what is the mortality rate? What, 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 what is happening right now? What, how many people do you think it kills percentage wise? The, because you don't see all the cases, uh, you know, you get the denominator wrong. It's clearly, you know, 1%, 1.2%. Germany is a great example uh, where they got their testing act together and they have interventions, uh, you know, and they're at about that rate. The China data uh, after the Wuhan overload came in at about that rate. Places like Spain and Italy aren't testing broadly yet. Uh, you know, their testing is even more limited than ours, which is still completely misprioritized. So, uh, you know, it's not not much more than 1.2 percent if you have a fully functioning health system um, to treat those who get serious respiratory problems. What about asymptomatic spread? I've, I've read that anywhere from 10 to 25 percent of, of the spread could be coming from people who don't show symptoms. What do you think it is? Yeah, that's uh, we have the this Seattle Coronavirus Assessment Network that's really going to understand that. Um, I think it's very unlikely the numbers are anywhere that high. I know there were studies, but the way they were done, uh, you know, chest CT scans are going to show you other diseases. Uh, it's very unlikely there's a lot of asymptomatics who never become symptomatic, and yet they're infecting people. And the work and there's many countries that the foundation has gathered together on this, uh, including the UK and Germany, and we're gonna get some other sites in the US on this. We need to know that number because that deeply affects uh, rebounds when opening up. Uh, and there is some data that suggests it's not a gigantic number, but very, very important to pin that down. We have a vaccine that we've gotten out to basically the entire world. It's how long? It is fair to say things won't go back to truly normal until we have a vaccine that we've gotten out to basically the entire world. I'm gonna block herd immunity. Is it possible that we want a vaccine? Is that what this is all about? I mean, this is a conversation that I'm seeing happen. Just take a look at what they're telling us we're supposed to be waiting for. Listen to this very quickly. When will a corona vaccine be ready? A vaccine that enables us to resume our lives without restrictions while protecting us from the disease. The only thing that will really allow life as we once knew it to resume is a vaccine. We should be and are and will be making a universal corona vaccine. To me, that's the best long-term goal for this. This is a whole new era for making vaccines and one that's 
emphasizing speed. What we need is uh, to make vaccines uh, for a billion people and we need to make that as quickly as possible. Vaccines won't be ready overnight. They will take months. Probably 14, 15, 16 months. At least 12 to 18 months away. Until we have a vaccine. Until we get a vaccine. A new hope for a vaccine. That's how long strict rules will be in place across the state. It, it is fair to say things won't go back to truly normal until we have a vaccine that we've gotten out to basically the entire world. It is fair to say things won't go back to truly normal until we have a vaccine that we've gotten out to basically the entire world. This is the mayor of the hour here. This is one of those principalities that we have been praying. Here is Mr. Bill Gates. You heard here from his mouth. Somebody gave me that quote and I posted a quote on Facebook that he said that there will be no more public gathering and things will not go back to normal until everybody in the world is vaccinated you hear it from his own mouth this is not from my mouth but this is i'm just repeating what you just heard because somebody actually questioned my quote when i posted on facebook like where is the proof that he said this like i have to go look for proof you want to prove him wrong you go search and see there's no proof out there anyway here it is number one number two it looks like this is this man has a fantasy a desire an obsession what is what is i thought he was a computer geek I thought he made his billions in his garage developing a Microsoft so a computer software. Since when he became a vaccine expert, was he not a computer geek? So somewhere, somewhere he crossed the line from being a computer expert to become a vaccine expert. I think Bill Gates needs to go back to his garage and create or invent another and better computer and leave the vaccine to the experts. Honestly, that's my honest opinion about this dude. His wife just had an interview with CNN, a Clinton news network, criminal news network, corrupt news network. That's what it stands for. Uh -huh. She just had an interview and she said she see body, dead bodies or body bags all over the streets of Africa. That's her dream. But those words will backfire on her. Yes, she will eat the fruit of her own lips. Whatever she's prophesying decree over Africa, she will repay. Finish with that. But listen, beloved. It is time for some serious spiritual battle and serious spiritual warfare. And my prayers, Angel, be quiet. My prayers for these demonic principalities, you know, they call themselves politician, big pharma, FDA, CDC, UN, World Health Organization, NASA, NSA, DHS. You know, Angel, you're going to get a slap. Come here. You know who they are. But my prayer for all these diabolical devils. I call them principalities in suit or principalities manifesting in the flesh. My first prayer for them, join your voices with me, Christian. We shouldn't just talk, talk, talk. Let's begin to put our voices on our knees in protest, in prayer like Daniel, and begin to protest and take this thing very personal because it is. My first prayer point against these principalities, number one, let there be an exposure. Let God begin to expose the evil, diabolical, demonic agenda against humanity. Number two, let God begin to raise up true whistleblowers from within their own organization that will expose them with evidence and documentation from floor to ceiling. Irrefutable, undeniable evidence and proof to confirm the, the, the whistleblowing agenda by exposing these guys. Number three, these principalities... They must bow their knees. They, their knees must bow or their head must roll. What that means? That means they must bow their knees and accept Jesus Christ. So they get born again. Their heart turn. They turn from their evil and wicked ways. They turn and get born again or they are removed and taken out. Because when your heart is filled with darkness and wickedness, you will look for ways to destroy humanity. But if your heart is filled with love, you will use you you will you, you you will use that love for God and love for humanity will motivate you and drive you to create vaccine that will help save lives as opposed to take lives. But when your heart is ruled by darkness, when you have so much darkness ruling in your soul, when the thrones of your heart is birthed at iniquities, or iniquities are birthed at the thrones of your heart, and the thrones of your soul rules in darkness, 
then you will create a vaccine to destroy the lives of humanity. So we're going to pray. You got to get born again. You and your kind, all of you out there, all those principalities ruling in high places. Like you get a one percent of the population of the world, they are enjoying ninety percent of the world's wealth. Well, whereas the rest of us must suffer. There's about to be a flip in the script. God's about to flip the script. There has to be there has to be an exposure, and these guys have to be made to pay. So you and your kind, you either get born again, turn from your wicked way, or you're gonna be taken out. Period. That's my prayer. And you don't like my prayer, you don't agree with my prayer, my prayers, no problem. Just keep it moving, keep it stepping. I'm not going to debate with, debate with you. I'm not going to argue with you. I have no interest or desire to argue with anyone. You disagree, no problem. Go and find a video that you... Go and find what you agree with and run with it. This ain't for you. But those of you who agree with me, please put your voices with mine. And every day and night, let's pray until out of these principalities are safe or they are taken out. God bless you. This is Dagnet, your prayer drill sergeant. Thank you for sharing, subscribing, and inviting. Let's get the word out there. Enough is enough now. Thank you.